what if a war could be won without a single shot being fired on the ground? This is not a theory. It is the new reality of defense, and it happens in space. High above us, a silent struggle for dominance is taking place. It is a battle over satellites, the silent machines that power our modern world. And one small nation, Israel, has become a master of this new kind of warfare. They have built an invisible shield to protect their place in the heavens. Today we will break down exactly how this shield works. This is the story of how vision, technology, and smart strategy combine to create a powerful defense. Welcome to Winds of Thought. To understand why this matters, just look at your phone. The map that guides you, the weather report you check, the message you send. All of these things depend on satellites. For a nation, this dependence is a thousand times greater. The military uses satellites to see its enemies, to talk to its soldiers, and to guide its smartest weapons. Banks use them to move money. Emergency services use them to coordinate during a disaster. These orbiting machines are the backbone of a country's strength. And because they are so important, they are the perfect target. An enemy does not need to attack an army on the beach if it can first blind that army from space. So the most important question in modern defense is this, how do you protect your eyes in the sky? For Israel, a nation that faces real and constant threats, the answer could not be left to chance. They built a solution that does not rely on one single wonder weapon. Instead, they created a layered shield, a system of three powerful and connected layers that work as one. This is a master class in modern survival. The first layer of Israel's space shield is all about seeing the future. It is a system of prediction and early warning. Space might look empty, but it is a very busy and dangerous place. Thousands of active satellites share the sky with countless pieces of junk. Old rocket parts, broken equipment, and even flecks of paint. All of it is moving at impossible speeds, so fast that a tiny piece of metal can hit with the force of a truck. For a country like Israel, which depends on its satellites for its very security, a single collision could be a disaster. So Israel built a digital nervous system to watch the sky. This system is made of powerful radars and special telescopes placed carefully across the country and with allied nations. They are always watching, always listening, collecting a flood of data on everything moving up there. But data alone is not enough. You need to understand it. This is where Israel's skill in technology truly shines. They use advanced computer programs, powered by artificial intelligence to make sense of the chaos. This AI is the brain of the operation. It takes all the information and runs constant calculations. It predicts where every object will be in an hour, a day, or a week. It looks for patterns. It looks for danger. It can spot a single satellite that suddenly changes its path in a suspicious way. It can see a piece of junk that is on a direct course for one of Israel's most important satellites. This early warning is everything. In space, time is your most valuable resource. Knowing about a threat days in advance gives you options. Finding out only minutes in advance means you have already lost. Israel's tracking system is the quiet, watchful guardian that never sleeps. It turns the vast and chaotic arena of space into a known battlefield. It gives Israel the precious gift of time to react. But what happens when the Guardian sees a threat coming? This is where the second layer of the shield comes to life. This is the layer of direct action, known as ground-based neutralization. Imagine a hostile satellite is moving into a position to spy on Israel or to block a crucial communication signal. The response does not always need to come from another satellite. It can come from the ground. This is a key part of Israel's clever and practical approach. They have developed systems that can reach up from the Earth and touch a target in space. We are not talking about missiles that blow things up. An explosion in space is a terrible idea. 
it would create a huge cloud of sharp, fast-moving debris that would stay in orbit for years, threatening every satellite, including friendly ones. It's like setting off a bomb in a glass room. Everyone gets hurt. Israel's methods are much smarter and more controlled. The goal is not to destroy, but to disable. To make the enemy satellite useless without creating a mess. One way to do this is with powerful lasers. A laser beam fired from a station in Israel can travel up to space and overwhelm the sensitive cameras on a spy satellite, temporarily blinding it. Another method uses complex radio waves. A strong focus signal can be sent to confuse the satellite's computer, basically giving it so many commands that it can't do its job. These effects can be temporary. The satellite might be blind for a few critical hours during a conflict, but it is not permanently destroyed. This is a precise and responsible way to fight. The advantage of these ground systems is that they are under Israel's direct control. They are hidden and protected on home soil. They can be activated in minutes. An order is given, and within moments, a beam of energy is silently striking a target hundreds of miles above. This layer acts as the long arm of Israeli defense, proving that you can protect your space assets without ever leaving the ground. Now we arrive at the third and most advanced layer. This is where the defense moves into space itself. This is called orbital deterrence and self-defense. In this layer, Israel's satellites are no longer just passive targets. They are given the tools to protect themselves. They become smart, agile, and resilient. This changes the entire game. Instead of just having a bodyguard on the ground, the person being protected is also a skilled fighter. The first part of this is movement. Israel's newest satellites are built with extra fuel in small engines. This means they can move. If the early warning system on the ground tells a satellite that a piece of junk or a hostile object is coming its way, it can simply fire its thrusters and move out of the path. It can change its orbit. This ability to dodge makes it an incredibly difficult target to hit. The second part is trickery. These advanced satellites can carry small decoys. If they feel threatened, they can release a decoy that looks just like the real satellite to an enemy's radar. Suddenly, the attacker has two targets and doesn't know which one to hit. This confusion wastes the enemy's time and resources. The third part is active defense. This is the most secret area of Israel's program. Some satellites may have the ability to fight back in a non-destructive way. They might have a small jammer that can send a powerful signal back at an enemy satellite that is trying to spy on them. It's a silent electronic battle. The mere existence of these abilities creates a powerful message for Israel's enemies. It says attacking our satellites will not be easy, and it might not work. This is called deterrence. When an enemy knows that your satellites can dodge, can deceive, and can fight back, they are much less likely to attack in the first place. It makes aggression a very bad gamble. The true power of Israel's system is not in the three layers alone, but how they are woven together. They are not separate tools. They are one connected system. The tracking layer is the brain. The ground-based layer is the strong arm. The orbital layer is the agile body. They are in constant communication. The brain sees a threat and immediately alerts the arm and the body. It might tell a satellite to get ready to move while at the same time preparing a ground laser to interfere with the threat. This gives Israel multiple ways to solve the same problem. An attacker would have to defeat all three layers at once, which is an almost impossible task. This is supported by a deep belief in redundancy. For every critical job, Israel does not have just one satellite. It has a team of them. If one satellite is damaged or destroyed, another in the constellation can immediately take over its work. The service is not interrupted. The nation's digital eyes and ears stay open. Israel also focuses on being able to quickly replace lost satellites. If one is lost, a new one can be launched on a fast rocket to fill the gap. This means that even a successful attack is only a temporary problem, not a permanent victory. It makes Israel's space presence incredibly tough and resilient. 
So what does this mean in the real world? For Israel, this space shield is not a luxury. It is a necessary tool for survival in a dangerous neighborhood. It guarantees that even when surrounded by threats, Israel can see, communicate, and defend itself. It ensures that the GPS for its pilots, the communications for its leaders, and the intelligence for its soldiers will always be available. This capability gives Israel a strength that is much greater than its small size. It provides a powerful deterrent against any enemy thinking of starting a conflict. For the rest of the world, Israel's approach is a blueprint. It shows that you don't need to be a giant superpower to be a master in space. It shows that with smart strategy, advanced technology, and a clear focus, a nation can secure its place in the final frontier and ensure its security for the future. This is the quiet, determined work of a nation building its future, not just on the land, but in the vast expanse above it. But in the vast expanse above it. If this look into the high-stakes world of space defense was interesting and helped you understand our world a little better, please support our channel. Giving this video a like and subscribing to War Tech Zone helps us bring you more content that cuts through the complexity. Hit the bell icon so you never miss a video that explains the forces shaping our future. Thank you for watching.